mind when I said the word right. Give me a definition of what gave mind. Right. Well, okay. Give me, okay. Yeah, right. Like, right. Like, like, yeah, right. Okay. Anybody have any other thoughts on the word right? Correct. That's another way. Okay. Actually, what I was talking about was one of those brothers that flew the plane back to Kitty Hawk. Right. Or actually, what I was actually talking about was a rite of passage. You know how you go through and uh, those, those, those key elements. So I said a word, and everybody was thinking they knew what I meant and being able to define it. But as Cheryl rightly pointed out, as Cheryl rightly pointed out, we think we know what we mean when somebody says something, and yet we're, we may be thinking something very different. Collaboration is a word kind of like that, right? We talk about the importance of collaboration. Everybody in the nonprofit, oh yeah, we got to work together. Collaboration is very important. Uh, we, as a foundation, talk a lot about collaboration. We, we really, we highly value that. We want to see people do that. And yet, when I say the word collaboration, um, we tend to think, oh yeah, we know what that means. The, the reality is, and we discovered this um, in a formal way, probably two or three years ago, that there are degrees of collaboration. Um, that it's not a one-size-fits-all kind of thing. So what you have in front of you is a picture of something that we uh, got from the Tamarack Institute several years ago called the Collaboration Continuum. <laughs> Um, you want to use a, it's got a, just got a minor thing? Okay, good. Just, uh, where's the green part right there? Oh, there is right here. Perfect. Okay. So, the collaboration continuum allows for the fact that when we say collaboration, there's actually a lot of different flavors, a lot of different degrees. Um, and it's really important if we're going to have a common language and do the things working together like Eric talked about, that we understand the differences in that. And so when we say, yeah, we want to collaborate, well, what exactly does that look like? And where are we on that? So uh, I'm not going to go through a lot of detail on it, uh, all of this in the interest of time, but I'm going to point out a few of the highlights. Um, so one end of the continuum, the left-hand side of the continuum, um, we have compete. And you may think, well, that's a very good collaboration. Um, but actually, that's where you have to start. You have to say um, that in, on this side of the continuum, um, we're out there, but we're competing for clients, resources, partners, public attention. Right there. We're out there, um, but we got to acknowledge competition. Now, you may say, well, that sounds funny to me. I've sat in a meeting with um, some people. We were talking about pulling them together to have ongoing dialogue. And one of them told me, look, I'm all about competition. You know, I'd like to crush the other people who are going to say <laughs> And they, they were just being honest, and I appreciated their honesty. But that's, you have to acknowledge that, that when people come together, that may be a mindset they agree in every day, right? And the parameters we'll be looking at as you go across the continuum are actually two down here. Um, this one says it, it tends to be a loose kind of relationship. This one is a very tight relationship with people. Uh, the other parameter we'll talk about is turf versus trust. Right? This side of the continuum is all about turf. Right? I want to protect my arena. I want, I want to succeed, and I don't care whether you do or not. This one is trust. It says, okay, we've, we've established something here that makes it easier for us to work together. That's the trust part. Um, so, uh, that's the left-hand side of the equation. The next one, you move a little over, and it's coexistence, okay? I know who you are, um, but you know, we may show up at the same forum, the same meeting, or something like that, but there, I mean, otherwise, <laughs> I just know who you are. Uh, there's a communication piece where we are networking occasionally. Maybe we get together, we share a little bit about what we're doing. That's called, that's on the collaboration continuum, that's called communication. Uh, if you move a little further on the, the, uh, the loose and tight and the turf and trust, that's cooperation. Um, here, maybe there are referrals going on between your respective organizations. Um, as needed, there's, there's some kinds of informal interaction, and maybe you're working together a little bit on a discrete activity or a project. Coordination, the next level of this, is now we're systematically working together to adjust and align our work. So maybe I'm saying, hey, what would happen if I did this and you did that in service of the, of the same general outcome, to use that word that uh, Eric was talking about a few minutes ago. Um, the grayed out section, or the furthest side of the uh, continuum, 
That's where we start to get to things like true collaboration, okay, according to this continuum. That means, first of all, we're in a longer term relationship. The nature of it is not going to be, well, we just happen to see each other and we chat a little bit. There's a longer term systematic interaction. It's based on a shared mission, it's based on shared goals, it's based on shared decision makers and shared reasons. And then finally, you get it in, in an ideal world, you get all the way over to the right hand side, um, and it's integration, right? I mean, we are meshed. Basically, we are fully integrated in terms of program planning, the funding, everything that we do is done with an eye towards the other part of the group. Okay? Now, that doesn't happen overnight. Right? And so, when we say, again, it's back to the right, 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 right. Okay? When we say collaboration, right, there's all number of flavors that come to mind about this from we, well, we have coffee. Today to, no, we have a systematic monthly meeting, it's always on the first Friday of every month, and we sit, to, sit together and we've got the right people at the table and we're talking about um, this is our ultimate objective and where we're going and we're bringing, bringing resources to take. That's very different, but it tends to all get great over when we use the word collaboration. So again, we're, we're, you've got a copy of this. Um, we hope it'll be useful just to maybe not only get a common language, but start to think about the, the places where you collaborate. What's the nature of it? What's the nature of the relate of the true relationship that's going on? Is it more on the left hand side of the continuum or more on the right hand side of the continuum? Is it a turf thing where we kind of we share a little bit, but ultimately, you know, uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna be in charge of this thing, or is there an openness and a trust and a willingness to actively work together? So maybe again, just something to think about, something to think about your existing collaborations, a framework to think about, well, where are we on this? And what does that suggest about turf versus trust and about loose versus stuff? Um, the last thing I'll leave you with on this <coughs> one is um, what makes this work and what determines not only where you are, but how quickly you can move to the right hand side of the continuum is the trust piece of this. Um, somebody, somebody has said that collaboration moves forward at the speed of trust. And I think that's absolutely right. Um, that that the, you accelerate your way across the continuum. <laughs> When you're building those trust relationships. Okay? So that's the first thing that I want to show you. Um, and, and talk about how collaboration brings one thing to mind. Uh, another uh, thing we run into is with collective impact. And again, people, I, I have uh, I, I have to kind of smile because I've heard collective impact um, described all different ways in the community. Right? We need to do some more collective impact, right? And, and for a lot of people, that means, okay, you bring the donuts. Um, but but that's, that's not what collective impact is. And, and it, again, in a similar fashion, um, it tends to be kind of a placeholder for we're going to get together and work together. But the thing is, a collective impact is a very specific <coughs> type of collaboration. Like a very specific type of collaboration. And this is one definition. I've seen others, but, um, and it's a little, uh, you know, high, high pollutant, but I'll, I'll break it down here in just a minute. But collective impact has been defined as the commitment of a group of important actors from different sectors to a common agenda for solving a specific social problem. Okay. Now, we'll unpack that one here uh, in more detail in just a minute, but group of important actors. We're talking about the right people at the table. Okay? If collective impact can work, you have all of the people who need to be there, and there's the right people who need to be there to have this conversation. The right organization. Um, a common agenda. We're not just getting together uh, and you do your thing and I do mine. This is this is uh, something that we, and we'll talk about this in a minute, that we have hammered out and agreed this is what we're about. And, and part of that is, this is what we're not about. We're not going to try to do X, Y, and Z. We're going to try to do A and B. And that's what we've all agreed to. And then it's, it's designed to solve a specific and often, most often, very complex social problem. Right? This is not bake a cake. This is tackle poverty. This is homelessness. These, these are big, intractable issues that, frankly, are only going to be solved if you can get the right people around the table, the right organization, and everybody agrees how we're going to define this and how we're going to tackle it. Okay? So, when you hear the term collective impact, you should think about the number five. 
Right? Anytime you hear somebody say collective impact, you should think about the number five. That is because there are five elements that all five have to be present if something is truly going to be in the technical <coughs> description, collective impact. Okay? These are the five elements. I mentioned this one before. There is a common agenda, a shared vision for change, a common understanding of the problem, and a joint approach to solving it through actions that have been agreed upon by all the people who are at the table. Okay? Now, don't minimize this. This is hard work. This is exceedingly hard work. Because when you get a bunch of different organizations together, and they're thinking about things differently, and they have different individual agendas, um, wrestling to the ground, what is our common agenda we're going to tackle, and how will we work together to accomplish that? Again, don't minimize that. That is, that is the front end piece of this, and it is exceedingly hard work, but it's essential if you truly are going to be talking about collective impact. Okay. Um, the second element, shared measurement. Collecting data, measuring results consistently, this is not a, what do you think? Well, what do you think? Well, let's talk about that. Um, this is a data-driven process where you baseline where you are and you very tangibly track progress over time to see are we making progress towards our shared vision for change and, our, and, and consistent, with, consistent with our common understanding of the process. Okay. So you've got to be collecting data. This is not a group of people regularly coming together to share their opinions about um, what things look like or where the needs are. This, this has some data behind it. The third element that makes it collective impact is mutually reinforcing activities. And this one's a little collective impact speak, but participant activities must be differentiated while being coordinated through a mutually reinforcing plan of action. Yeah. Okay, so what that's saying basically is um, you play to your strength, Eric talked about this a little bit, you bring your strength to the table, um, and I'll bring my strength to the table, and we'll be very clear on who's doing what in there, right? Which portion of the solution am I responsible for, and it will be most effective if I am playing to my unique set of strengths. I can't tell you the funder how many times we have people tell us, if you will just give us enough money, we will get this done, right? Um, and, and what they're saying is we will build the strength that we don't have currently if you will just give us enough money. This is different than that. This says everybody bring the strengths that are the, the guts of who you are and we'll all come to the table and share those rather than try to each individually as an organization build that out. So, and, and you have to be very clear about who's going to do what in this and what strength will they bring to the table. In fact, some of the organizations that I would say that will come to the table may not be as clear as you would like for them to be about what their unique strength is. Um, and that's an important element. Okay, so that's the third uh, condition of collective impact. Fourth, communication. Consistent, open communication. You, you cannot over communicate with your collective impact. You can very easily under communicate, but you cannot over communicate uh, in collective impact. Constantly, um, you have to be talking about what do we see and what do we learn. Um, that's that's one of the ways that you build that trust that we talked about. That's so essential. Nothing's off the table. We're going to have an open, honest conversation. We're not going to uh, have happy talk about what we, you know, would love for this to be, but it's not really there. This is this is. Uh, Brutally frank, but again, it's in the interest of building trust and making progress against this large and tractable problem. And then the last thing, and this is um, maybe the one that gets left out or ignored or discounted as well, yeah, but we really don't need that. No, we really need it. It's called backbone support. This is um, a separate organization with the staff and, and to have the right set of skills to serve as the backbone of this organization. And what that means is um, somebody is doing the meeting method. Somebody is doing the agenda. Somebody is making sure the trains are running on time. And that is their job. Their job is not to do this work. 
Their job is to ensure that this work is being done by all of those important actors around the table. It takes resources. You can't just say to somebody, um, oh yeah, you know, um, in your spare time, you know, can you do the minutes and the agenda and all that kind of thing? No, it will never work. You have to have dedicated resources whose job it is, whose existence is, to provide the backbone support that keeps this work going because most of the people who come to the table don't have the time to add meeting minutes and agendas and phone calls and follow-ups and those kinds of things to an already busy schedule. They're, they're there because they are important actors in a different setting. They don't have a lot of spare time to do this, so we need to find somebody who has the skill sets uh, and, and frankly surface the resources to be able to make that work. You have to have that backbone. Um, people want to skirt, they want to say, well, we can do all this without the backbone. I've never seen it work successfully without it. Not if you're talking about true collective impact. Um, you have an article, I think, you, uh, in addition to these slides that I just showed you, you've got an article that actually started this whole process from the Stanford Social Innovation Review, I think it's the name of the organization. And it lays out these five and it kind of fills in the blanks because I've had to do this relatively quickly. But, um, but um, at any rate, so, so if nothing else comes out of today, when you hear the word collaboration, please know there are different flavors of that, different degrees of that, and try to think through your active collaborations in terms of how would you fit a more continuum. And when you hear the word collective impact, please, 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 think five, right? Five distinct things that make it uniquely collective impact. Well, let me ask you a question to see if, if uh, the takeaway is what I hope it is. Uh, would, the, would collective impact be on the left hand side or the right hand side of the collaboration continuum class? Perfect, I've done my job. Okay. <laughs>